the few female CEOs at the time. There still are very few. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that journey as one of the few in most of the rooms that you were in? Well, you know, I don't think it's just as a CEO. Right from the time I was at BCG to Motorola to ABB, I was the only woman in the room. And I remember in Motorola, when the first time I went to the board room in Schomburg in the headquarters to present, at the first break, all the men came out to use the restroom. And I went up to Bob Galvin, the chairman, and said, is there a women's restroom on this floor? And he just looked at me, jokingly patted me and said, just be one of the guys, go to the men's restroom. <laughs> there was a women's restroom, but there were no women at all, okay, none at all. So at every place you go to, um, I had three strikes, immigrant, person of color, woman, right? And what would happen is I would go into the room and dig a hole for myself. Even though nobody told me this, I'd say to myself, they're looking at me and saying, why is she here? What can she contribute? So I was in a hole, I had to dig myself out of the hole. So I'd over-prepare for everything. I would be the only person who's read all the material and more. Um, I'd be careful with what I say, uh, but I made sure that I added value to the discussions. The pressure was on right through. Um, even as a CEO, I'd say, uh, you know, you face the normal issues of people talking over you. You'd feel people rolling their eyes when I talk. Uh, you know, you go through all of that, but at that point you're a CEO, you don't care. But till you become CEO, it hurts. When people talk over you, it hurts. Uh, about one incident I write in the book, when I would say something at a meeting, my boss, the CEO would say, um, that's so theoretical. It sounds like a consultant. I left consulting 30 years ago. He'll say, it sounds like a consultant. Another executive would repeat exactly what I said. He said, that, see, that's a great idea. I put up with that for a while. And then I said, when I wanted to say something, I said, Al, could you say this? He said, why can't you say it? Because if you said it, it's a great idea. If I said it, it's very theoretical. Okay, that ended this conversation about you're too theoretical. The boss got the message. Don't try it unless you have another job lined up. <laughs> but, you know, I had to go through all of that. And my husband and I decided that anytime our respect was compromised, we would quit. So I wasn't going to take it. I mean, these things still are happening. So what guidance do you want to give this audience of some future CEOs, some future amazing leaders in whatever dimension you are about changing these dynamics that still exist? Well, they're much less today than before because the numbers are there. And you've got more women, more diverse people in the boardrooms, in seats of power. So things are changing. But again, as Ernest Hemingway says, um, you know, it can't continue to just be gradual. At some point it's got to be sudden, it's just got to happen. And uh, change has to happen much more rapidly than it has been happening. Um, I think men in power have to come to the table and say, this kind of behavior has to stop. And they have to call out the bad behavior when they see it. And I say the same for women in power. Very often women don't support other women. That has to change too. So the sisterhood of women, the brotherhood of men, and then the combination of the two somehow have to say, we're looking for the best and brightest talent, not a man or a woman or a certain ethnicity or a certain color or eye, you know, blue eyes or brown eyes. I'm just looking for the best talent to do the job. 